free energy. The desire of mankind is to have at their disposal free and unlimited quantities of electric power. This energy must be cleanly produced, which means no centralized power plants with all of their disadvantages, but rather preferably decentralized without any environmental harm and only as needed. Instead, the world of energy is currently such. What the world requires is a change, for the price of energy is too high. As such, we do not worry about money, but rather environmental harm and war. If we, as humans, want to have a future on this planet, then we must produce our energy cleanly and freely. We need energy from the quantum field. This is space energy that is all around us. The quantum energy generator, here a prototype, is a device with unimagined potential. It has been available for a long time, but just now are the plans available for everyone, without patent rights. This should, of course, call for worldwide enthusiasm. It should form spontaneous, fully new synergies amongst research groups that have not yet existed. One gets the impression that the year 2014 is the beginning of a long-awaited energy revolution. The QEG can now be developed for daily use. But first to the roots. Nikola Tesla is generally known as the greatest inventor of all time, as even Albert Einstein said of him. We can, for example, thank Tesla for alternating currents. Among his 700 patents are a dozen devices that he described as electric generators or dynamos. It is striking that he always spoke of reactive power, the apparent power of alternating energy, and of resonance. Our modern space energy research is based on the numerous patents from Tesla. One of his most famous discoveries is arguably his space energy converter, with which he made a Pierce arrow into an electric car. How his converter functioned remains to this day a secret. Tesla's most famous quote is, In space there is energy and we know with certainty that this energy is kinetic. Then it's only a matter of time until men will be successful to join his machinery with the very wheelwork of nature. Later, other inventors took these thoughts and invented other devices that are very similar to the QEG. We can find a patent from Robert L. Zimmerman filed on December 10, 1957 with the name high-speed composite electromagnet and permanent magnet generator. One can already recognize clear structures of our modern QEG. On April 22, 1975, we can see a patent from John W. Eklund under the name Permanent Magnet Motion Conversion Device. Here also one can clearly recognize the core ring with four poles and the rotor. It is not entirely out of the question that a few individuals built these devices earlier, and indeed we know of one, Timothy Thrapp. In a video published in the year 2008 by the organization WITS, he explained that he had built a quantum energy generator that can draw 40,000 watts, or 40 kilowatts, of power. He demonstrated very impressively how he separated the main power cord from the drive motor and could, by flipping a switch so that the generator would feed back its own energy, still supply additional kilowatts. More energy comes out of the generator than put in. In this case, by wits is for the drive motor only one kilowatt needed. More on that later. Next came James Robitill in the year 2014 with a public replication. With Hope Girl, a member of the FTW team, they pursued a mission 
that such a generator would not remain obscure, but rather would be generally known. After the first energy output was detected, a PDF document was written in which the QEG was documented and which now everybody today can download. It is available in many languages, including German. This generated hype. Everywhere in the world, diligent researchers jumped on the bandwagon. First, there was a prototype in Taiwan and then in Morocco. Parallel to this are hundreds, even probably thousands of groups that are today currently in development. China is of high interest. The Chinese take the project very seriously. They have 1,000 QEG engineers in their country to further develop this. It is likely that from there will come the next stage of the energy revolution. One cannot, of course, build the QEG with the PDF document alone. Additionally, one requires fundamental engineering knowledge of transformer technology, medium voltage technology, frequencies, and so forth. Certainly some parts could probably be built in a well-equipped workshop by a hobbyist, but other parts have to be manufactured by industrial machinery. It is thus essential to find the right company. So what actually is quantum energy? How does such a generator work? Nobody can say with 100% certainty at the moment. It is possible that the QEG works as an undamped electromechanical resonance circuit, specifically a parametric oscillator. A parametric oscillator is a harmonic oscillator with time and material dependent parameters, i.e. natural frequency and damping. This way, an oscillator can be supplied energy in order to increase the amplitude of the vibration. The method of power supply is called a parametric excitation, in this case, for example, by the rotational speed of the rotor. It acts by a parameter excited vibration with the aim to produce a resonance. Whether it is the use of this mysterious reactive power is not certain. Once a resonance is found, it can quickly come to an old, well-known resonance phenomenon, where suddenly a very high voltage is generated in the primary coil. We can now speak of the coupling in the quantum field of energy. One could maybe also call it neutrino power or space energy. For this reason, the apparatus has been given the name Quantum Energy Generator, QEG for short. From now on, the energy of the secondary coils transforms down and feeds through inverter consumers as well as, of course, the drive motor of the QEG itself. This view calls forth an important question. Why do we still use fossil fuels or nuclear power if this technique has been known since the late 19th century? To make it short, I'll use a biblical quote. The love of money is the root of all evil. J.P. Morgan, pictured left, who funded Nikola Tesla for a long time, prevented Tesla's inventions with the statement that he would have nothing to do with a device of free energy because you cannot connect it to a counter. From then on there was only the curse of war for oil and other resources. This sort of thinking has run throughout history until today. It has always been the rich and powerful that have prevented that. Literally hundreds of inventions mysteriously disappeared, either through patents or physical threats. The U.S. itself has provided more than 5,000 patents under wraps. PES Wiki, one of the largest and most important knowledge databanks about free energy on the Internet, provides a fairly good list of suppressed inventions. Among them are many inventors that were listed as put out of the way and murdered. In general, big energy corporations, banking corporations, and secret societies are always behind these scandals. The QEG has the potential to break this curse and bring more free energy devices. The QEG is only the beginning. Regarding science today, we'll let the scientists speak for themselves. Werner Heisenberg, 
a physicist and philosopher, is considered together with Erwin Schrödinger as the founder of quantum mechanics. He said, Science does not describe or explain nature easily as if it was about itself. It is rather a part of the interplay between nature and ourselves. This means that we can always explain only what we currently understand, no more and no less. Max Planck said, A new scientific truth does not enforce itself in such a way that its opponents are convinced and agree as instructed, but rather because its opponents gradually die out and the growing generation becomes familiar from the outset with the truth. And finally, Professor Dr. Walter Nagel, a GEN biologist, who unfortunately has no picture here, science, and not only, is an extremely conservative and dogmatic thing. Each confirmation of a paradigm is welcome, and every innovation is long rejected. The search for truth will exceed the instinct of obtainment, including self-preservation. Therefore, new findings usually only go through when hitting a sufficient number of researchers in the same breach. Then the system of thought falls over, there is a scientific revolution, and new paradigm replaces the old. Conclusion, no schoolboy, no student, but also no scientist or layman should believe in definitively proven facts, even if it is presented in textbooks. That's a pretty blunt deduction for the established scientific community that we love to believe in and give all of our responsibilities to. Here in the QEG again and again, the old voices are raised, just like they were after the perpetual motion machine, saying that it is impossible or that energy conservation laws prohibit it, etc. But we have to learn that textbook physics is inadequate to describe the QEG. It will not remain the only open source generator for free energy. Open source is the only thing humanity is really advancing. So it is with all such things. Germany fortunately has some excellent scientists who have already made a good name in research for the free energy and have published very good books. In Germany, there are many active people who concern themselves in their spare time with the core problem of energy. They are true pioneers. Let us listen to an interview Sterling Allen, the operator of PES Wiki, made with Hope Girl. Imagine the uh, interest has been international, but um, it seems to me that Europe is leading the world in this kind of stuff. The other thing that we've noticed is that there's a group in Germany as well that seems to be really taking this and running with it. Uh, there's some videos out. We haven't even had time to look at them yet, but um, they're taking these plans very seriously as well, seeing the potential, and we've already received a whole bunch of... Um... Here, as in other countries, there are many brilliant researchers, hobbyists, inventors, and engineers who have taken up the cause of QEG. We cannot hope for politics, for it is a caste system that, you get the impression, no longer has the welfare of the people in view. We have to do it ourselves. In a few years, maybe in 10 years, we will no longer be dependent on oil, gas and coal, nuclear, wind and solar, biogas and hydropower, but we will have to develop a clean, cheap technology that really gives our planet the freedom that we need. There will be no more wars over resources, and we will no longer defend our freedom in the Hindu Kush. Rather, we need a harmonious coexistence of people, where everyone has enough to live by. So must the energy transition look like. For this, there is no alternative. <laughs>